today I have this amazing stealth M4A1 class setup that you guys need to try out. You guys may have already seen this in a previous video. If you guys didn't see that yet, I did feature it in my top five M4A1 most unstoppable class setup, but I figured it needed its own video. For the spoiler alert, if you guys want to stick around for the gameplay, I do a breakdown of how I'm able to manage to get a nuke with this exact same setup. So let's just get straight into the class setup. I'm running with the FSS 12.4 inch Predator barrel. This one's gonna give us that sound suppression to stay as stealthy as we possibly can, as well as more aim down side speed. So now we're gonna move on to the optic. This one's actually optional. I personally prefer to have a sight on my M4A1 because it allows me to get more accurate shots, especially from long distance. And the simple fact that we're not running any extended mags on this class setup, it really does give you more insurance that your shot will be a lot more accurate by running a sight. So for the stock, I'm running with the no stock attachment. This one's going to give us more movement speed because we are going to be flanking very frequently and moving around the map a lot. And having that aim down sight speed is also going to be a plus. All right, and moving on to the rear grip, we're running with the stippled grip tape. This one's going to give us that aim down sight speed as well as that sprint to fire speed. When we're flanking along the map, we're more than likely going to come across enemies that we didn't know were there. So that's why stippled grip tape is going to be very important to this class setup, as well as the under barrel Merc 4 grip is going to give us that better accuracy from both long range as well as close quarters. Now another portion that's very important to this class setup is the perk selection. So you're going to have to have EOD because we want to take as less damage as possible when enemies want to put explosives out there such as claymores or C4s being thrown at us. For perk 2 of course we want to have on ghost because we don't want to be exposed on the enemy compass or the mini map whenever they do call in those UAVs and we're going to be flanking. We're going to stick out like a sore thumb and we do not want that. For perk 3 we're going to be running with tracker you're also going to see this later on in the gameplay how important that tracker is in order to locate enemies in our area that we didn't even know were there all right so the next portion of the video is where i break down my gameplay if you guys do enjoy this video make sure to leave a like on it show some support it lets me know that this is the kind of content that you want to continue to see and subscribe if you're new around here join turbo nation today make it official by hitting that subscribe button and make sure you turn on notifications yeah guys i will see you guys in the gameplay peace all right and here we are we're playing on azir cave now the unfortunate part was i didn't get to start the match off from the very beginning the game just threw me into a match in progress now if this ever happens to you just start your strategy right away so what i'm doing is i'm looking at the mini map right now and what I mean by strategy is my flanking. So when you flank, you pretty much catch the enemies by surprise because they're just so busy concentrating on the engagements that they have with your teammates. Since I just spawned in is I'm looking at the mini map and I'm looking at where my teammates are. And that's exactly why I go right into the cave to see what's going on out here. Keep an eye on my teammate and notice how he disappears. So that's why I'm going to go ahead, go out and I'm going to turn to my left and look over this little ridge right here and take out the enemy. I'm going to keep continuing around the map. I'm going to stick to the outskirts as I slowly inch my way back to where my teammates are and I'm actually going to pick up a stray here that's exactly why I like flanking because you're most likely going to come across the easiest kills you could possibly get without the enemies even noticing you were there because like I said before they're just so busy concentrating on your teammates it allows you to get those easy kills so what I'm doing in this exact part of the map in the rug shop to be exact is that this gives me high ground this also gives me a good point of view into every line of sight that the map has to offer as well as some good cover you can close these doors if you want to so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pretty much patrol the outer perimeter of this rug shop and as you can see i did pick off an enemy that was running by so teammate just went inside to the rug shop what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch roles with him momentarily so now that i know that nobody's in this cave area that's why i'm going to come over here and investigate and just pre-aim now watch as i just pre-aim into the cave and I try to get some kills here. Unfortunately, I don't. And I'm not going to push that. I'm being passive aggressive. I do not push into the cave. I'm still patrolling the inside and the outside of the rug shop. And I'm going to come back to go ahead and check again on those enemies that I wasn't able to get the kill on. And as you can see, I did pick up a kill right there. So that's very important to just keep checking back and forth. Every line of sight, always watch your back. Every time you get a kill, always be on the move. Move from one location to another. Now, the reason why I'm looking into the cave in this specific part is because of the UAV. I'm pretty much just playing by what the UAV is giving me at this point and positioning myself accordingly. Now, in this situation, I threw my C4 instead of going directly for the guy because throwing my C4 is the smarter move to make because the C4 can just get the kill for you instead of just physically going out there and rushing into a potentially bad situation. So that's exactly why I threw my C4 there. So again, I'm rotating back 
to this area because I know there's a bunch of enemies coming in from here because of the UAV. And then once again, I'm going to rotate into here, take a peek into the cave. Again, not pushing. One thing I'm about to do right now is I am going to rotate to the other part of the map after i get the kill right there so let me pause it right here now that i know that all my teammates are here in this area that leaves this area right here to be where enemies are most likely going to be i don't want to get flanked so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate into the cave where my teammates are where i know that there's no enemies at all and i'm going to strategically place myself right here so it's essentially in the same exact area but from just a different angle because what i want to do is i want to get a good vantage point of the enemy that are going to be coming in from this area and that will allow me to pick them off from this line of sight right here so let's just play it so it all makes sense for you guys and that's exactly what i always mean by rotating around the map accordingly these are signs that you have to take notice of in game and make the adjustments as soon as you possibly can now as i'm rotating i'm always checking the area first to make sure it's clear so that i don't get shot from behind i do notice these footsteps now here is exactly where i want to be I'm from the outside looking in and as i said i was able to pick off potential enemies that will be crossing that line of sight notice how i come out here but i'm not going to fully push forward like i said earlier i kind of want to be around my team but not really sticking with them i'm just kind of patrolling the outer perimeter of our inner circle if you want to call it that you kind of want to stay within range of your teammates because that's where the action is at now i'm going to actually pre-aim down this line of sight just to see if there are enemies coming through. And that's exactly what I was talking about. I had no idea there was an enemy there, but the simple fact that I was pre-aiming and checking my lines of sight and moving from location to location, never staying in one exact spot is why I was able to pick up that kill. So here is a really crazy part, man. Like this is a glitch for the white phosphorus kill streak. This is the first time I've encountered this. I'm on a streak right now. I'm absolutely upset. I'm trying to figure out why I'm not able to call this in. And it's actually a kill streak glitch that gets me killed. I'm not able to exit the animation. So I'm extremely frustrated, obviously, at this point. And I'm thinking like, wow, I was actually on a good streak. I had a good thing going on. But you know what? Let me see if it was actually a one time thing. So I go ahead and try to call in my white phosphorus once again. Lo and behold, it's the same exact result. And I really hope that the developers do get these bugs sorted out because it does impact your gameplay. As you can see here, it killed me off of my streak. I was miraculously able to get out of the animation. I was just spamming a bunch of buttons and I was finally able to get out of it. So that teaches me not to ever call in my white phosphorus ever again. So uh, at least for this gameplay, I'm not going to. Now, here's one little scenario that I do also want to point out. That's a very small minor detail. And I also actually pointed out this mistake that a previous subscriber made in my subscriber review series. If I were to just rush for this kill right here, then I wouldn't have seen this guy coming in from the side and he could have potentially side swiped me and killed me off of my streak. That's why it's important to just remain calm and play as passive aggressive as possible. Now I'm on another streak. I just called in my UAV. This is really good for information. So I'm trying to flank and rotate around the map accordingly. I do notice that these red dots are appearing on this area of the map. So I'm going to try to beat my teammates to these kills. Obviously, I just died off of the streak. So I'm hungry for some kills. I'm going to pre-aim into this cave area because obviously based on the mini map, that's where they are. And again, I'm using my C4 to help me get those kills safely without having to rush in there and try to take them all out by myself so that's why you should always consider using your equipment to its advantage whenever possible now i'm going to check my back just to make sure we don't get flanked and now what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to rotate safely to this area of the map now the reason why is because i know for a fact the enemies were just last seen in the cave and my teammates are actively engaging in gunfights right now what i want to do is i want to try to flank the enemy and get them from behind while they're distracted by my teammates that's the whole premise of flanking and why i love it this guy just momentarily pops up out of nowhere he probably decides to go for me after he sees me after he pops out but i was in a better position and i was able to get the kill so now I'm looking to go for the flank here and I'm going to check everything first before I push. I'm not just going to rush blindly. I'm always going to pre-aim down these lines of sights. And this is another good example why you should always be ready to assume that there's enemies here. Anytime you get to a blind spot such as here, you always want to pre-aim or just always assume to get ready for a next gunfight because this is exactly what the guy did. That was his mistake. He had his gun already down and he wasn't ready for that gunfight. 
So now I'm here all alone on this end of the map. I know for a fact that we're in deep enemy territory. So I pop on my dead silence. I hear this guy's footsteps. I pre-aim around that corner. I'm also pre-aiming behind me as well, just to make sure. You know, I don't know for a fact that there's enemies here, but the simple fact that I'm pre-aiming gets me in a really good position to win a potential gunfight. So another thing that I do want to point out, notice how I don't engage in this gunfight at all. So the reason why I don't engage is because I'm prioritizing right now what's important. I do hear somebody else's footsteps coming around this corner and if I were to engage in this guy it would have been already too late. I might have already been flanked by the guy that's coming around the corner. So I decide to just forget about that situation, worry about him later and worry about this guy instead. Now instead of just casually walking around I decided to do a little bunny hop around the corner just so that I can catch him by surprise. Now I've got my advanced UAV, things are looking great. So what I want to do now is I'm going to slowly advance my way into their spawn and keep them suppressed in their spawn. Now I missed my couple shots here, but I just wait for him to pop up again. Again, we have the advanced UAV. We literally know where these guys are coming from. Again, I'm going to jump around the corner, catch them by surprise. So back to what I was saying about keeping them suppressed in their spawn is that this allows us to give us more control, more predictability, and more consistency in winning those gunfights. As you can see here, they have no idea because look at where I'm positioned right now. I'm behind this rock. I'm going to actually use this rock to my advantage to be able to give me some cover while I take out these people. All I got to do is literally aim in the direction where these red triangles are and I'm going to get the kills. I just need to make sure that I'm covered really well and that's something you always have to keep in mind. So I do pre-aim over here because of course I'm making the connection, the red triangles right here. So I'm going to take that guy out and there's one more guy down here. And there's another one that's going to be coming up right there, but there's somebody actually shooting at me. But the fact that I'm crouched right now and this rock is giving me a lot of cover is the reason why whoever is up here is not able to go ahead and kill me. So I'm going to focus right here on this guy. My advanced UAV is actually running out. My teammates are keeping these enemies busy and these guys actually have no idea that I'm here. Thanks to this stealth suppressor class setup. And that's what I really like about the M4A1 stealth class setup. You know, it also really complements my playstyle and why I take massive advantage of it in this situation right here. So uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and actually investigate these bullet tracers because there's an enemy obviously shooting at my teammate. He actually just killed my teammate. So I'm going to pre-aim down this area and take him out. So I do see this guy running. And this is an example of being passive aggressive. I'm noticing that I'm on a really high streak right now. So I'm not actually going to go for this guy. I'm going to let him actually come to me. And, and another reason why I didn't go for him is because I know for a fact there's a bunch of enemies in this area of the cave who are most likely camping there in dark spots that I can't see. So I'm actually just going to let the team come to me. And as you can see, we have about two minutes left. I quickly drop shot because I didn't really expect that guy to show up. And that's why drop shotting is really important in this game for those type of situations. If you don't know how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description that will take you to a movement video explaining how to do just that. I really want to drop a nuke here. Now, this thing is blocking my vision. And I don't know if there's enemies in behind this area. So that's why I go ahead and retreat. And I decide to actually watch our backs because look at this area. It's very empty. There's no teammates here. Now, I do see that my teammates are engaging in a gunfight in this area right here. So that only means that the enemies will probably come through this area in a matter of time. So that's why I decided, you know what? Let me just turn my attention to this area. And lo and behold, so I see this guy right here and he clearly sees me. He's going to engage in a gunfight. He's already aimed down sights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take him out obviously but the simple fact that i didn't get him the first time i'm actually going to jump towards this window to get a different angle and take him out and i'm already being shot so i'm going to get out of that situation i'm going to stim shot right away i'm going to close these doors so that i don't get shot and i'm also going to take a peek here to get a different angle on the same person now somebody actually just came in so i'm going to pre-aim up here and that's the importance of closing the door is so that whenever enemies open that door, it's clearly audible. You can hear for the audible cues and that will alert you that somebody is there. That's why I was able to take out that guy. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm really close to my nuke here and I'm not taking any chances. I want to get some clear shots at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take this guy out. I'm on a 28. I need two more. Somebody is clearly outside of this door. This was actually a rather risky move. And I was thinking, you know what? If I had a C4, maybe I could take this guy out, but I don't. So I went ahead and just actually pre-fired as I was walking across the door. Just like that. Bam. Now I'm going to close that door once again. I'm one kill off of my nuke. I really want this. And I don't see anybody approaching. 
So now I come down here for a different angle, also to distance myself a little bit in case I get overwhelmed. And there you go. I was able to call him the nuke. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of processing and just a lot of explaining of positioning. There goes the nuke going off. I think that this was a really good video to explain to you guys because you guys haven't seen me drop a nuke yet, at least the ones who are new around here. I've actually dropped a nuke previously before this. It was a live one. There is the final score. We finished off with 46 kills and three deaths. Even if you die to something stupid such as a glitch or, you know, you die off your streak in the beginning, just stick to the principles of stick it to the outskirts of the map try to flank as much as possible rotate accordingly to where your teammates are on the map so that you can get an easier vantage point on the enemies make sure everything you do in the game is calculated there has to be a reason for everything you do and if you follow those steps correctly maybe you will one day get your nuke as well make sure to leave a like on it it will show me that you do want to continue to see these kind of videos and subscribe if you're new around here make it official today by joining turbo nation hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications notifications and i will see you guys in the next video peace